Hey friends, welcome back to Metabolic Health Summit. It's Mike here. I'm with Dr. Richard Feynman, author of Nutrition in Crisis. So we're going to talk about different macronutrients in your diet and how that may affect your body's metabolic efficiency. Uh, a lot of people are confused or have questions about calories in versus calories out. And Dr. Feynman has done a lot of exploration in, should we say, thermodynamics and well, I, I, I teach thermodynamics and I studied thermodynamics and uh, I think uh, I got into this field in a professional way. I, I teach uh, nutrition and metabolism to students, uh, but I got into this in a professional way over the question that people say uh, uh, the laws of thermodynamics predict uh, calories in, calories out, that's all you need to know. Well, the uh, it, it actually, in a conversation yesterday, it, it was clear that this is actually the way we teach thermodynamics to students. Uh, the first law says that energy is uh, uh, not created or destroyed, and if you have a system where you eat a certain number of calories and you uh, have gained a, uh, uh, expended a certain number of calories, then the balance uh, comes out to zero. Now, what's changed? Well, the first law of thermodynamics doesn't tell you that. In other words, the first law of thermodynamics says nothing should change, but you know a lot changes in metabolism. That tells you you need another law, and that's the second law. The second law says, I mean, there are different ways of, of explaining it, but it says that all real processes are inherently inefficient. You know, not practically, not uh, uh, polishing things down to certain tolerances, but inherently, you can't beat the second law. So then you have to ask, what is the probability that two diets of different composition have exactly uh, the same efficiency? And efficiency, uh, in, in, uh, in a weight loss diet, you want inefficiency. You don't want to store fat. It's, it's very unlikely. In fact, very frequently, uh, two diets may have the same efficiency that calories in is, and calories out may be all you need. In those cases, it's not because of the physics, it's because uh, biological systems have uh, internal compensation, they have feedback. What that means is that if you're gonna defeat that, if you're gonna break through uh, that steady state, you have to do something relatively extreme. That's why a low carbohydrate diet uh, is effective because it breaks through uh, uh, homeostasis, that is, uh, biological tendency to keep things the same. Uh, it's a current uh, problem now in that uh, for the first time the uh, uh, dietary guidelines are, uh, well, I was going to say uh, well, were willing to, but they were pressured to take low carbohydrate diets seriously. There's some concern that the uh, initial feedback is that they're going to call it 45% carbohydrate as a low-carbohydrate diet. That will not work. Mm. That, that will uh, give them the result that for some reason they want, that it doesn't make any difference. Once you, you have to get down to about 25% carbohydrate before you see that the calories are not the whole story. So that's uh, where we are on that. That's amazing. We'll have you just come over here just a little bit more. I think it's fascinating. Now, is, is that due to insulin? Is it the hormones? What is it that creates this different metabolic efficiency in this low-carbohydrate diet context? Well, well the uh, thermodynamics doesn't tell you about mechanism. It just says uh, uh, what the outcomes are and what's possible. The mechanism does depend predominantly on insulin. I mean, there are several other hormones and there's inherent metabolic effects. But insulin is a big player. I, I, uh, in my book, I describe insulin as, uh, well, in the book I, I say that uh, metabolism is like American football. There's at least 22 different things going on at once. The uh, TV uh, program will focus on the quarterback because that gives you your best bet. Insulin is the quarterback in metabolism. Uh, you get very far uh, following the effects of insulin. It's not the whole story. And, uh, you know, as in American football, uh, downfield blocking may be the key to the play. So it's n not in every single metabolic effect. But yes, the insulin is a major player. Okay, that's a great point. Have you ever had any professional collaboration or uh, communication uh, with Kevin Hall? He's kind of 
not so much in favor of this carbohydrate insulin mediated hypothesis of obesity. I was just curious if you've had any interaction and any thoughts there. Well, uh, yeah, we've had a number of uh, uh, personal interactions. Uh, I uh, uh, like Kevin Hall because he uh, uh, read uh, my first paper about thermodynamics and liked it. Uh, since that time, we've had a number of disagreements. Uh, I mean, I think that, you know, people talk about the insulin uh, hypothesis. It's not a hypothesis. It's a biochemical fact. You can do the uh, relevant experiment in a test tube. Uh, how it applies is an area of disagreement, and uh, Kevin and I are not really on the... Uh, uh, same line, but uh, we'll work it out, I guess, in the sure. end. I think it's good to have differences of opinion. I was just curious because a lot of people that are pro calories in, calories out, or energy balance have this, they refer to his paper. So I was just personally curious on that. Uh, so, Dr. Feynman, a kind of final, you know, kind of question here is how does energy balance fit into this model? How important is that versus the uh, inefficiency or the differences metabolically created with different macronutrients? Well, the simple answer is that uh, you can find out. I mean, even the most extreme uh, opponent of low-carbohydrate diets admits that there's no risk short-term. Uh, try it, and uh, if it uh, doesn't work, uh, you can uh, look on the Internet for guys for whom it does work, and if it never works for you, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of ways to, if you're talking about weight loss, there are lots of ways to lose weight. My, uh, the bottom line on my book is I, I make three points, and, and that is that uh, number one is if you're okay, you're okay. Uh, people uh, think that we had some uh, Garden of Eden diet before some guy brought high fructose corn syrup into the world, and I don't think that's right. A lot of people do per are perfectly healthy, not overweight, and eat uh, whatever diet they eat, and that may be uh, perfectly healthy. The second point is... Uh, reducing carbs is your best bet. Uh, it, uh, the way I describe it is, uh, if you want to lose weight, don't eat. I, I said this as a joke at a conference, but it's still relevant. Uh, but if you have to eat, don't eat carbs. Uh, and if that doesn't work, you can try something else. The third point, though, is the important point, that if you have diabetes or metabolic syndrome, you must try a low-carbohydrate diet first or a ketogenic diet first. It, uh, people are different and there's no guarantee that's the best for you, but that's the thing to try first. Amazing, I love that three points. And final question here that just came to mind as you were speaking about that. Does our carbohydrate tolerance change with age? I know this is kind of a polarizing, controversial topic. What do you think? Well, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, mine certainly has changed, but I've also been on a low-carb diet for 20 years, so I don't know whether it's the uh, just one of the uh, uh, unfortunate consequences of aging or whether it's a consequence of the diet. So I, I'm on a much lower uh, carbohydrate intake than I used to be. But I, uh, 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 again, people are different and I don't want to generalize that for anybody else. Yeah. Dr. Feynman, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hope you have a great rest of your seminar. And uh, very grateful that you're all still here watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and please check out the links in the books below. We'll catch you on a future live.